I definitely think the doctors have a duty. And, you know, when you are already at the point where you're seeing a doctor for issues related to brain or mental health, right. um, then I think absolutely, you know, they should, they should be broaching this subject. But I think, I think that people in the fitness community and influencers, people on, you know, using the younger people using the tools of social media really ought to be um, talking about what exercise does for the brain because yeah. that's what, because I think that, that that's what motivates people really to get to the gym and to begin a yeah. workout routine. And that's it's, where people are. I think yeah. if we look at the rates of underdiagnosis or, um, you know, people not getting diagnosed early enough or getting baselines of brain health, you know, neuropsychological evals, looking at, you know, biomarkers that would be preventative of cognitive decline. I think that a lot of the people where it can make the biggest difference because, you know, the World Health Organization does say it can significantly reduce the risk of cognitive decline. There is less evidence for those with MCI. So you don't want to wait till you have cognitive impairments to stop, start exercising. We can talk about some of the evidence on MCI and dementia with exercise. It's, it's different, though. For those that are interested in prevention, let's call that crowd the worried well. People who are well but are worried about their brain health, they want to prevent it. Most of those people are going to be in the community. They're all, they are going to be in the gym or the group Zoom exercise class mm -hmm. or the park, right? And they're in there and they're looking for things to be motivated for. And they're looking for things to motivate them. They're looking to have a purpose to attach to. And I think, I think everyone recognizes that their brain, it's not their identity, but it's what allows them to interact with the world. It's such an important thing. And it's not like weight loss isn't important. It is. It's not that getting out of pain and staying mobile and being able to be functional isn't important. It is. But there's something about brain health that for me, and I think for most other people, it's the most motivating thing, right? Because you don't, we're not in a place where we work with our bodies. We work with our brains. We go to work and use our cognitive functions to make income, to interact with people, to have meaningful relationships. And if we can maintain and improve that, that's a pretty strong motivator, right? And so it, it's true that getting out of pain and losing weight and staying more functional, that's correlated with brain health. But I think starting from that, that purpose, you know, you are going to the gym for your brain, for your mental health, I think is a really powerful message that everybody needs to take advantage of. Amen. Couldn't agree more. So let's talk about exercise and the brain. You talk about, correct me if I'm wrong, there's three main modalities that you, mm -hmm. that you like to discuss, right? Yeah. Yeah, let's go into those. Okay, so, uh, and, and I like to look at them at a very high level, and the metaphor I give is we have carbs, fats, and proteins. I think everyone understands that. For exercise, we have these three exercise macronutrients, if you will. We have aerobic exercise, we have resistance training, and we have skill-based training. And that third category, skill-based training, could be synonymous with what we call neuromotor training or at least the you know, physical activity recommendations for Americans called neuromotor training, we'll break that category down. Aerobic training, I think, is the most obvious to people. My issue is that when people ask what is the best form of exercise for brain health, most people will say, oh, aerobic exercise is the best. But there's more and more evidence saying that's not the only thing we need to be doing. But it's been studied the longest. It's been proven the most in, in animal models and human models. And I think that's where the weight and the popularity of the recommendation comes from. People, uh, and, and also aerobic training, I think is the most accessible for people, right? And when people think about exercise, they think about aerobic training. We'll get into the different types. For example, there's steady state training, there's high intensity interval training, there's questions about duration and frequency and these types of things. Um, and, you know, is it, a different effect if you're running versus on an aerobic bike. And there's some interesting research looking at the involvement of the legs and the role of brain health and the hippocampus and things like that. We'll come back to it. The second category is resistance training. And resistance training is starting to get a lot more popularity. And I appreciate that because I think strength training is so important for general metabolic health, for aging, but also for cognition. And whereas aerobic training is typically talked about in the role of improving hippocampal function and volume, you know, memory and learning that area in the medial temporal lobes that you always, when you, when you hear about exercise in the brain, you hear about two things, the hippocampus and BDNF, right? <laughs> we'll, we'll come back to, you know, growth factors in a second, but um, resistance training is interesting because when you, you don't typically hear resistance training recommended for brain health, but there's some really interesting systematic reviews showing that resistance training seems to do some things that are quite unique to the brain 
that are really valuable. And uh, it seems to have an effect on the frontal lobe versus just the hippocampus. Uh, it seems to, therefore, an effect on, on executive functions, because theoretically, that's where they live, right? Um, but it also seems to pr protect these hippocampal subfields uh, and, and make them more resilient in neurodegenerative disease and pre preventing that. So resistance training does a lot. It also has differential growth factors, whereas aerobic exercise may have more of a focus on BDNF or brain-derived uh, neurotrophic factor. Uh, resistance training seems to focus on releasing other growth factors like irisin and IGF-1 or insulin-like growth factor 1, which we'll come back to. Then the last one is neuromotor training or skill-based. We'll use them interchangeably. And that category is a bit more broad. But I also think it's the category that people are missing when they're looking at creating an exercise program for brain health. And it includes things like dance, sports, martial arts, leisure activities that are skillful where you need to learn something and focus on something. And I think a helpful way to think about this category is imagining yourself not paying attention and miserably failing, <laughs> right? Whereas on an exercise bike, you can kind of zone out. Walking is, at least if you don't have Parkinson's disease, it's relatively autom automated, right? And with, with skill-based exercise, you really need to focus. If you don't pay attention in the Zumba class, you're not going to follow along. If you're not paying attention in, in tennis, you're going to get hit or you're going to miss the ball, right? If you're not paying attention in boxing and you're sparring, you're going to get hit, right? Mm -hmm. So skillful exercise is where you need to learn something and you need to develop skills. You need to pay attention. And we'll talk about some of the other potential uh, benefits of that. But it, it also includes like hand-eye coordination, foot-eye coordination, balance drills, proprioception exercises. And I, I think it's helpful to split that category into these more metabolically demanding activities, the dance, sports, and martial arts we kind of talked about, but also the mind-body exercises, Pilates, Tai Chi, Qigong, different forms of yoga. And so in my mind, a brain-healthy exercise program should have three of each of those three components. And you could stop right now listening to this and just select the one you're doing the least and do more of that.